This week on Check Please South Florida, a celebration of rustic homestyle Italian food in Fort Lauderdale. Everybody becomes one in the restaurant oh, and starts singing. It's great. A Peruvian gastro pub with an industrial vibe in Miami Springs. The spiciness is on point. They ask you, how you like the spice? Mm -hmm. It's very good. And gourmet Jamaican fusion cuisine in Boynton Beach. The oxtail and the rigatoni, that is a hit. We were all eating off of that bowl. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check, Please! South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. Spicy. I'm in. And, and I, I really enjoyed that. It wasn't my favorite. I ate it all, and I would definitely go back. We did not know who we were walking into that. Everything was on point delicious. I'm Michelle Bernstein and welcome to Check Please South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot and then the other two go to check them out to see what they think. This week, real estate agent Aurelis Cosme says you'll want to move right into this cozy spot for authentic Peruvian food. From divine ceviche to tasty tapas, she calls it the perfect place to hang out with friends and family. And she says you definitely won't leave hungry. And Maritime Training Center VP Kevin Petrovsky recommends a place bursting with Jamaican flavor with menu offerings that are both traditional and unique. He says you should dance on over to this Boynton Beach gem. But first, real estate broker Richard Salter is bringing us to Italy with his pick. He says the family-owned place offers true Italian cuisine and each homemade dish is made with love. And if you're lucky, you'll even get to experience an Italian sing-along with the entire restaurant, chef included. It's in Fort Lauderdale and it's called Dal Contadino Trattoria. My name is Nuccio Giannino and I'm the owner chef. My name is Cremina Giannino and I'm the owner of Dal Contadino Trattoria. Our story began in, uh, back in 2012 when we moved uh, from Italy in Florida. He told me one day, I think our uh, dream will come true to open a restaurant. And it has been an amazing journey ever since. My passion started when I was really young. And I was looking at my mom, how she was preparing the food in my house. And I really got in love fast. And uh, now I'm making my, re my own recipe but uh, follow always their creation. Every dish here, it's cooked from scratch. So we bake our bread daily. We have our ragouts and sauces prepared in-house also, along with our handmade pastas. And of course, our desserts are made here. I was singing in Italy for a band. And then when I came in America, they asked for some music, in the place or whatever. And I start to pick up a microphone and I sing some song. And now it became like a big, big event in our place. And every day they ask to let me sing. <laughs> yeah, many, we have a few songs that everybody loves and yeah. enjoys and they request actually. <laughs> we try to do different songs, but they come back to song. We want that song. Del Contadino Trattoria is where we call it home. In Italy we say passione e amore for the kitchen. It's passion and love for the kitchen. Tell us how you found this place. I found it just by chance because there's another restaurant very close by that I frequented and that was busy. So I, I popped into to Del Contadino three and a half years ago when they first opened. Okay. And just fell in love with, with the, the staff and the owner and love everything about it. Well, I had the lamb ragu, which was wonderful. It's lamb in a red sauce. So it was served with pasta, yeah, but Ooh. it was a, a very light pasta. Not, you never feel heavy when you leave the restaurant. Although okay. you, you're full, it's not like you've, you've overeaten. What did you start with that night? Because I know that was your main yeah. course. Yeah, we had the roasted artichokes, which the, the, the waiter recommended. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, did you all have yeah. the artichoke? Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. How were they served? They were just served you know, on a plate on their own. Um, they were roasted with uh, parmesan, olive oil, uh, truffle oil and garlic and mm. uh, just very Did tasty. you like the artichokes, Adelis? I love it. I put my bread on the plate and eat all. Yeah, and they were tender. You know, the artichokes sometimes 
if well, they're not done right, can be that's the whole be a problem chewy, with an artichoke. So, right. You know, you never have a bad tasting artichoke, but you might have one that just doesn't melt in your mouth. So that's how you yeah. know you're having. But these a were nicely food. roasted, yes. filled with the, the seasoned breadcrumbs and the cheese. Oh, how good. delicious! Good. What else did you have? We did the campanata, which okay. was good. Everybody enjoyed that. So it just came in a bowl. Eggplant. Eggplant, onions, tomato, peppers. Uh, nicely flavored, uh, okay. it's a nice serving, went great with the bread. And then I did the uh, octopus, mm -hmm. which was interesting, uh, kind of big, so okay. they were a little chewy, they were, they were grilled, so it had that nice grilled flavor. So was it one Two piece? tentacles. Two tentacles, Two wow, tentacles. that's a lot to serve. And it came with this lemon hummus, which one didn't really help the other. Okay, um, okay. But, but the grill flavor was really good on there. How was the atmosphere there? When you walk in, it's really a nice atmosphere. You yeah. really do feel like it's just a cool Italian cafe that's family run, nicely decorated. On a Friday or Saturday, seven, eight o'clock, it's busy, you know, from that hour until closing time, and they never kick you out. You can right. just sit in there and, you know, they want you to have a prolonged experience. Speaking of the experience and the singing, tell me about that a little bit. <laughs> well, actually, we went last Saturday evening and they actually, actually had a professional singer there for the first time. And he was playing the guitar and doing the old Italian songs. And my wife wanted to sit in this back room because uh -huh. she likes privacy. Uh -huh. And then she said, oh, everyone was having such a good time. I want to go to the main <laughs> dining room. But then he, then he changed to, you know, good American sing-along type songs. Yeah, yeah. But then the chef comes out and the owner and, and he'll do two or three songs. And everybody becomes one in the restaurant oh, and lovely. starts singing. It's great. And my the bartender was my server too, okay. Eduardo. Right. He was very nice. He recommended us the wine, the one that I ordered. It How wasn't was the available. Wine list, by the way? Very nice. Okay. Very was nice. it mainly Italian wines? Um, a little it was, bit of everything. No, yeah. it's a little bit of everything. It was, mm -hmm. good. it was good. So, what did you have other than the artichokes? I have the special of the day the breaded pork chop with okay. vegetables and potatoes. Like a Milanese style? Yeah, kind of. That was my husband's choice. I had the fettuccine bolognese. Bolognese, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. It was delicious. Nice Deli meat sauce. Mm hmm. Very good. How about desserts? Did anybody have dessert? I had something that's not even on the menu, but he said he would make for anybody that comes in if they ask. And it's an old family recipe, and he didn't even have a name, so I called it Nucho's Dream because he, he nice dreamt sir. about it, seriously. And it's, uh, it's his mother's homemade pound cake with gelato and then a sherry liqueur on top. Yum. And it was so good. Like we actually had the same thing. Did you? So, Did you really? Yeah, it was actually <laughs> it was a special. It was listed as a special oh, it was? Yeah. dessert. Oh. It was good. It was very sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was diabetic coma sweet <laughs> by the time you were done with it, but it was, it was good. Arelis, tell me again. I had the ricotta cheesecake. Uh, it was very soft. Um, seems like they made it freshly. It was good. And then we had the lemon tiramisu, mm -hmm. which was really good. They said homemade lemon cello yeah. went into mm -hmm. it and uh, really flavorful, really moist. That was the hit of the table for dessert. Well, Richard, Dal Contadore Trattoria was your choice. Please sum it up for us. Uh, I believe it's the ultimate uh, dining experience, combining simple family recipes uh, with exemplary service. Lovely. Kevin? Traditional Italian restaurant, traditional servings, a uh, little inconsistent in some of the dishes and in, in the service. Um, not sure I would go back. Aurelis? Very nice rustic trattoria, family owned, operated, uh, nice service, uh, great food. Well, for a true taste of Italy, go to Dal de Contadino Trattoria, located at 2775 East Oakland Park Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. Open daily for dinner and for lunch on the weekends. Reservations are accepted and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $50. love cheesecake? Well, have you ever had ricotta cheesecake? It's a little different. It's a little more delicate. So what I did was I crushed a bunch of ginger snaps in a food processor and I added a little bit of melted butter and I set it just like I would a graham cracker crust. So from there, you take some ricotta cheese and you want to run it in a food processor to get it nice and smooth. almost like a cream cheese would be smooth. All right, to that, we're adding a pinch of salt, a little bit of all-purpose flour, sugar, egg yolks, a little bit of vanilla extract, and my favorite ingredient to every cheesecake is some lemon zest. 
We'll run that for another, like, eh, barely a minute. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and remove all contents of your food processor into a bowl like this one. To that, I've taken all the egg whites from those eggs and we used a, um, a hand mixer, if you want a stand mixer either way, um, to make them nice and stiff. So go ahead and add them to the cheese mixture. And this would be called a fold. Lifting up from the bottom and folding over. Lifting up, folding over. Once all of that is in there, go ahead and allow, make sure you've allowed this to cool, your crust to cool, before adding in your batter. This goes into an oven at 325 degrees. Okay, and this is what it turns out to be like. It's just beautiful. It has a, a good caramelization around it. Let's go ahead and slice off a piece. And I personally don't need much to serve a cheesecake, but I have brought with me a little bit of my favorite orange marmalade. I'm gonna top mine because I love orange marmalade with just a little touch like that. And I think that this is just the perfect thing to sit down with your friends or by yourself, have a cup of tea and enjoy your ricotta cheesecake. If you wanna try making this ricotta cheesecake for yourself, be sure to check out my recipe online at checkpleasefl.com. Now, real estate agent Arelis Cosme is selling us on her favorite spot for ceviche. She says it may be small, but it's big in flavor. The food is the star of the show at this Peruvian gastropub, serving both classics and modern flavors. From the distinct menu to the industrial vibe, she calls it the perfect place to chill with friends and experience a fresh approach to Peruvian cuisine. It's in Miami Springs, and it's called Ceviches by Divino. My name is Richard Encalada. I'm the owner of Ceviches by Divino. Oh, ceviches by Divino came from another restaurant we got. It's called Divino Ceviche. It's my two other brothers. They created that eight years ago. So then they came up with this new concept. It's something different where we got a special place, different from the other one. My dad is a good cook, and my brother always asking for advices, how to cook this, how to cook that. So he got a passion to do food. The Peruvian food came from a lot of influence from the Spanish, from the Italians, from the Chinese, the Japanese, Africa. So there's a combination of a lot of countries. Well, we got entries, we got tapas, we got small bites, appetizers, like sushi rolls, and it's a combination of a lot of nice plates, you know. And Cacola is well, it's a national drink from Peru. It tastes like a bubble gum. Some people say it tastes like soda. Nobody can compete with Inca Cola. I mean, everybody drinks Inca Cola. Ceviches by Vino is a new way to taste the Peruvian food. Okay, so tell me a little bit about like walking in to the Vino. Walking in is like an industrial vibe, you know, small. Uh -huh. you know, it's for a quick... Uh, it's a quick bite. Yeah. You okay. go there, you know what you want to eat, right. and then you keep going. Okay, so what did you have this last time you went? It's called Leche Tigre de Mercado. Okay. It's a breaded uh, seafood and ceviche on a glass. Yum. And it's full of ceviche and... Uh, so wait, it's fried seafood in a glass with a ceviche flavoring mm -hmm. because the Leche de Tigre is the, all the juicy, yummy part. And ceviche inside, too. Right. Oh, yum. Um, I always go and order the ceviche trio, which is only fish. And they have it with the regular ceviche, the yellow sauce, sauce uh, and, yeah, amarillo. Sauce, uh -huh. yeah. amarillo. Uh -huh. And then the other one is like the black olive. Uh, tapenade. Kind uh -huh. of the tapenade uh -huh. flavor? Oh, okay. Yeah, I had the same thing. You I had the trio? I, yeah, and I like spicy food. Uh -huh, so I, I asked for it spicy, spicy and it wasn't anywhere near spicy enough for me. <laughs> oh my God. But it was very tasty. Very Did you nice. like it? Loved it. Was yeah. there one yeah. that you liked better than the other? The traditional I think I liked the best. Okay. Yeah. So what else did you have? Uh, unfortunately uh, that's all we had. My wife had the, the appetizer that you talked about. I had the tres ceviche and then uh, the, the service was taking so long and 
we didn't get drinks, you know, in timely manner. So we, oh. that's all we had, unfortunately. Mm, that's we didn't. A shame. But we, we, you know, now you said, you know, it's a quick bite place. We went probably with the wrong focus. Thinking that you're going to dine. When we go out, you know, we go out for a number of hours and spend sure, a long time. Sure. But you're, you're right. It's a place where you just go in and you know what you want and you order it and then you move along. It's not a place that you're going to spend hours sitting It's not there. for dining. Yeah. No. No. Though, though that was not my experience. I mean, uh, we, mm. we went and dined and appetizers and entree and dessert and um, we were probably there an hour and a half, almost two hours. Service was great. I love this place. You I did? Mean, I, I oh, love this place. Um, so how'd you start? What did you have? Well, I love this octopus thing. So we, we did that. We did <laughs> the octopus the again. Octopus right? It kept idea. the theme going. Okay. Um, but it was four small tentacles that were served in an iron skillet. It was a little cast iron skillet huh. with a rococo pepper sauce uh -huh. and then uh, chilies and, and it, delicious. Hmm. And then uh, my wife had the ceviche ayo marillo, which the, the fish, nice big chunks of yes. the snapper, vegetables were fresh. It was just a, a really fresh dish. Okay. And then I had the uh, orozco uh, morisco, nice. and, uh, which was very good. But I had asked for hot sauce. Uh -huh. And so they make their own hot sauce out of these Peruvian chilies, and the waiter warned us that it was hot, was it? and it was hot. Nice. You had to be very careful with that, but delicious. Uh, Didn't between you the guys try the, the sushi rolls? No, but the, the oh people God, next to us the best. Did. Yeah. Oh, do you like the sushi there even more than the ceviche? The uh, uh, cevichado, cool. It's uh, the fried shrimp with the uh, ceviche on top. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. And the... Um, Causa ganadora is the potato, um, and it has passion fruit inside the, the shrimp uh, wow. that is fried too. It, it was you like shrimp? I love shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> All your dishes you've had are shrimp. <laughs> That's funny. Shrimp is a favorite of most people. You had a dessert that you loved. Oh, I will go back for this over and over oh, again. It? So it was these little donut holes, which were fine. Okay. But it came with this ice cream made from lucuma. Lucuma. Is that uh, lucuma. so? Uh, yeah. A Peruvian fruit, which yeah. we were described as between an avocado and a mango. So when you yes. look at it, it looks oh. like an avocado. But oh, this was like flan ice cream. Wow. With caramel sauce, but it was airy. It, it wasn't well, that's dense. That's the thing. Lucuma is almost like eating a custard itself. It was and so anything it makes, it makes it that much better because it feels like you're eating a custard of whatever it might be. I, oh, how delicious. And I'm not a big ice cream person. I, I licked that bowl clean. It was delicious. <laughs> the presentation of the plates are very really nice. Really nice. The little yeah. flowers, yeah. the iron skillet presentation, the sushi came on boards. Well, Arieris, uh, ceviche by the vino was your choice. Please give us a little summary. If you're looking for a quick bite, a relaxed atmosphere and a great ceviche. Ceviche by Divino is your choice. Richard? Uh, it's a quaint little place, fresh ingredients. Uh, I think it can be improved with a, you know, more staff, better service. Okay. Kevin? Great little Peruvian traditional place for ceviche and sushi and great service and good fun. Well, for some exquisite Peruvian flavor, be sure to visit Ceviche by Divino, located at 46 Curtis Parkway in Miami Springs, open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $35. Finally, Maritime Training Center VP Kevin Petrovsky says there's no need to book a cruise to the islands. This place will have you up and dancing by the end of your meal. His pick is all about authentic Jamaican cuisine with a modern spin, with a menu exploding with flavor and a room filled with live reggae music. You'll feel like you're right in the heart of the Caribbean. It's in Boynton Beach and it's called Jamaican Cuisine. My name is Jasmine Edwards. I'm the manager, co-owner of Jamaican Cuisine. The name of the restaurant came about my kids. They always act like they're Jamaican, but they're, they're American, so I call it Jamaican. Traditional Jamaican food would cover jerk chicken, brown stew chicken, oxtail. For us, there's a twist to it. We um, decided that we're gonna open a restaurant that caters to everybody. Whether you're Jamaican, American, Italian. If you're Italian and you come in, you have a twist where you have the oxtail, which is Jamaican, and the pasta, which we do an oxtail rigatoni. Pasta is rigatoni, and it's our most sold, most loved dish by everybody across the board. Chris, his background, he's a Jamaican. 
Jamaican chef because a lot of people come, he's a Jamaican chef? I'm like, yeah. I call him a herbologist because whatever he puts his hand on, it doesn't matter what it is, it's coming out looking and tasting like gourmet food. We have a band every Friday night. He used to play at Waterway Cafe, yeah, Bradley Brown and Friends. When it comes down to Friday, the weekend, you have to make reservation because it's always jam-packed, but it's excellent. There's a wow because it's totally different. It's not like the regular Jamaican restaurant where you go and you get your jerk chicken. Our jerk chicken is totally different, tastes different. See my mouth on water? <laughs> I'm thinking about the food. <laughs> I always start with the ackee and saltfish. Do you really? I do. I love that you eat ackee. Oh, I, and it's such a great, between the sweet and the salty. It's amazing. And they serve it on tostones. So huh. because it's soft, you get the little crunch from the tostone. So let's, let's what a great bite. Most people don't know. I, Did you have I, that? I ordered that, and I didn't Did even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> do you know now? Well, do you I know what saltfish is, is, but I don't know what ackee is. Right. So ackee is a fruit. Okay. It grows on trees. It actually grows locally. It's from Jamaica. It's from the Caribbean and you have to pick the fruit when it actually opens up on the tree. If not, if you eat it when it's not ready, um, you can actually get pretty sick from it. Ooh. And ackee is even canned. It's so traditional and it's usually made instead of eggs because it has that kind of look and feel of mm -hmm. an egg, of a scrambled egg, and traditionally with salt fish. We went with Yum. five people. There were six of us around the table. So we ordered a bunch of different appetizers and make us and it was like a lazy Susan because everybody wanted to try everything. <laughs> right, right. And everybody was so impressed. I was blown away. Do you have the spicy shrimp? Yeah, one person had the shrimp. Yeah. The yeah. scotch okay, bonnet sauce yeah. with this garlic bread. I mean, the garlic bread and the sauce was, was the mm -hmm. hit. In fact, we ordered that a sec. We ordered a second helping of that because huh. everybody enjoyed it. So what else? For the main course, I had the braised oxtail. Oh, delicious. And I was on the bone in a really rich brown sauce with yeah. vegetables. And, and it's the, like and it was my so favorite tender. thing on earth. It was really, really tender. And just was it spicy a little bit? A little bit spicy, but not yeah. overpowering. It was just the perfect dish. And I, I can't believe it was that good, to be honest. All the food. And then my wife had lobster tail stuffed with crab meat. Mm. And, and the crab just melted in your mouth. It was, it was just one of the best meals I've ever had. It really was. Wow, look at that. Yeah. My husband and I, we uh, had the jerk trio. Okay. It was the original that they do barbecue and one that was very spicy, but it was it was delicious. And I had the chicken with rice. Good. You didn't tell me what else you had. I had a whole yellowtail snapper and okay. a coconut curry sauce. Yum. Mm. Skin was crispy. It had onions and peppers and great coconut curry sauce. So really flaky fish. It was delicious with uh, peas and rice. But uh, the oxtail and the rigatoni, that's that is a hit. Hmm. That was just that sauce mm -hmm. is just so rich and thick. The penny was just right. We were, we were all eating off of that bowl. So is there always live music? Friday, Saturday nights, mm -hmm. mostly. I don't think during the week. Okay. The place is not big. Yeah. And the band takes up about a third of the room. Wow. So you want to kind of go a little early, yeah. eat, and then stay for the music and dance. What did you have for dessert? Well, well there's only one dessert. <laughs> okay. So it's easy to pick. It's okay. bread pudding uh, with a caramel sauce. Delicious, comes warm. You had it too, right, Adelie? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a dessert person, but I, we ate it all. <laughs> I wish I'd have had it. You didn't have it. One of the best bread like pudding. Yeah. One of the best yes, bread pudding I ever had. Yeah. Really? How are prices? Expensive. What? <laughs> high. Are they high? I, yes. I think it's worth it. Yeah, you know, no, it's, it, yeah, it was it's, worth fresh, it. Yeah, because fresh seafood, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of effort goes into those meals. Right. So. You get what you're paying yeah. for. You get what yeah. you're yeah. paying for. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, not cheap, but well worth the money. Absolutely. Well, it's, this is the problem. You think you're making food, mm -hmm. and you think it's going to be very inexpensive, mm -hmm. right? But this is a whole experience. Yeah. yeah it, is, it was. Right. It was. It yeah. really, this is a true fine And I got restaurant. a band and entertainment. And, right. Well, yeah. I didn't see the band. <laughs> <laughs> Go on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> yeah. And he's quite well renowned, this guy, as well. Yeah, it's very he, Oh, really? He, yeah, he interacted with everybody, walks around. It's like a dinner club, you know, he's, he's walking around the tables and getting everybody involved. And, oh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, Kevin, Jamaican was your choice. Sum it up for us. Family run, really fun Jamaican restaurant, uh, amazing food presented in both traditional and unique ways. It, it's a great time. Arelis? Great uh, Jamaican experience. Um, definitely uh, trying to go back and experience more of the food and of the menu.
And dance a little bit next time. And there dance. You and dance. You'll be a better dancer than me. <laughs> uh, this place truly elevated my perception of Jamaican food. I was so surprised and overwhelmed how good it was. And it's a fun atmosphere and a gourmet food. Lovely. Well, for authentic Caribbean food, cruise on over to Jamaican Cuisine, located at 324 North Federal Highway in Boynton Beach. Reservations are recommended. The average price for dinner without drinks is about $40. Well, we've had a wonderful time. I want to thank my guests, Richard Salter, Aurelis Cosme, and Kevin Petrovsky. For more about the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, or if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And remember to find us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein, and I'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Saludita. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world.